Hey, I'm Reed. I'm the uh, CEO of Reliant Technology. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm here today with uh, Michael Hill, one of our storage architects, to talk through a topic uh, that I know you probably spend uh, all night reading about by your bed by bedside table. <laughs> it's called uh, hot sparing. So we're going to talk about hot sparing, uh, and we're going to cover four points. Basically, what is hot sparing? What's the tradi traditional way to do hot sparing? What's the new way to do hot sparing? And what's the impact to you storage administrators out there when it comes to uh, hot sparing? So, Michael, we've all been waiting up at night. <laughs> it's an exciting topic. Waiting for you to talk about <laughs> it. What is, uh, what's hot sparing all about? Well, hot sparing's been around for a long time. Um, Since like Moses? Not quite, not quite that long, but it's been around a while. You know, hot, hot sparing, it gives us the protection that we need within our raid groups and our, our sets. So when we have a fault, mm -hmm. we're going to do a copy out. And the copy out is going to go to a designated drive. And that's pretty much traditional. Everything goes. What's a copy out? Um, the data is going to copy to the spare. OK, makes sense. Okay. So hot sparing is basically copying out information to a hot spare if there's a failure. Right, right. We have a couple of ways that we're going to do that. Um, Traditionally or now? Well, in the way the drives fault themselves, okay. um, we can reach a threshold and it says, okay, well, I'm going to, I've reached my threshold, so I'm going to go ahead and offload from that drive. A threshold meaning I'm about to fail. Right, exactly. Okay. Soft errors, uh, hard errors, right? Okay. So, or we have a mechanical failure in the drive. And it's a hard failure, and then it builds off the parity drive. Okay, I, get, I know what hot sparing is now. So, what was the old way to do hot sparing, or way that maybe if you had BMC Clarion, Solera type mm -hmm. equipment, mm -hmm. or other equipment? What, what's the traditional way to do hot well, sparing? Well, basically, we you know we would take into account um, our drive counts, our drive types, and then we would select um, the spare and actually make it a spare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's selected. It's it's identified as a hot spare and you see that within the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, pretty simple. What's what's the change that's coming down the, the path right now for some of these new systems? Well, the interesting part is with the VNX2, we're no longer going to designate a drive as a hot spare. We're actually going to uh, have more or less what we're going to refer to as unknown drives. So they're, un they're not utilized, they're not bound to anything. So in the past, we would have identified a drive as a hot spare and actually bound it as a hot spare. It's designated. Uh, that's exactly right. The new way, no doubt, it's just floating around. That's exactly right. So is this floating around? Is it doing something else? Is it, a, is it holding no, it's, data? It's not. It's not. It's, is it? It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's unknown to the system, but it's known. It's, okay. kind of, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. Do you have to assign an unknown? No, no, that's... That's the beauty of this. Mm. It just it, it's in there. You know, a couple of the caveats is if somebody sees that as an unknown and they don't know that it's really supposed to be a spare, right? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody may allocate it. Uh oh. Yeah. That'd be what would happen if they allocated it and then you had failure. Uh, hopefully, you've got another unknown drive out there to account for those drives. <laughs> if you don't, you're kind of hosed. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you're, you're okay for that fault, right? Okay, so you're a storage administrator. You're about to spend some hard-earned uh, company dollars on a new storage array, mm -hmm. or you maybe already have a storage array uh, that you purchased. What are you thinking about as you architect a solution with the new type of hot spare with VNX2? You know, I st I'm still going to follow the same traditional rules and the fact that uh, I want to have the same types of drives. Uh, you know, if I've got 15K, this size drive, I want to count approximately every 30 or so drives. I still want to follow those kind of best practices. Um, the, the difference being is I don't identify them as a spare, mm -hmm. right? I don't go in and actually bind them, make them a array group like we've always done before. So they won't be allocated by mistake? Well, they True or false? That's false, yeah. They, they, they could be. Okay. Yeah. Somebody could come by and say, oh, there's an unknown drive. I'll go ahead and take that. Yeah. So any of the things you're thinking about, about this new hot spearing uh, technique as an architect? You know, one of the things, from an architectural standpoint, um, I don't see a lot of issues. You're, you're still going to account for your drive, you know, your drive ratios to your spares. 
or your unknown spares. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I see more onus on the, the administrators. He's already got tons of stuff on his plate. And, yes. And uh, now he's got something else to think about. Mm -hmm. So... So I wish your world just got simpler, friends out there, uh, but uh, apparently it hasn't. So uh, let us know we're on technology if we can help you, answer questions, provide technical guidance around configurations or solutions around these, uh, uh, these EMC configurations. Glad to help. We've got a lot of options, uh, but hopefully this helps you just provide a little more insight around what hot spearing is and how it's going to impact you. Have an awesome day.